Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to build the 533 Little Flipper, three and a half inch FPV frame. No, stop, stop, stop. We're not doing that this time. This is the latest version of the 533 Little Flipper frame, and it's undergone a couple of changes since it was first released. So we'll have a look at the changes and then we'll do a complete fit out. Let's get started. So I actually bought this frame about two months ago. And at that time, I received this base plate. And there was a problem with this base plate. The holes were cut in an incorrect pattern. Basically, you couldn't mount any VTX on there at all. So I told 533 about this. I also made a video and suggested a few changes that they can make to the frame. Now, I kind of thought that they might send me out a free base plate, seeing that I told them about the problem with it. But that wasn't the case. Support of 533 just told me to buy a replacement body kit. So all up, this frame has cost me 132 US dollars on my own money. Oh, shut up, Flipper. You know what? It doesn't matter. I can tell you this. 533 have had no input into the making of this video, and I sure as hell didn't get anything for free. So I'm going to build this frame out and give you my honest opinion as we go. Let's get started on the changes. So we've now got not only 25.5 by 25.5 mounting pattern, but also 20 by 20 mounting pattern as well. And you might have noticed that the 25.5 mounting pattern is actually M2, not M1.6. So that's for the DJI 04 air unit. And of course, the side plates are now compatible with DJI 04 as well. So that's a good thing. And moving over to the top of the frame, you can see now that these holes have been enlarged here. So you can easily access the stack mount bolts through there. That's great. Now, in my previous video, I alluded to the possible existence of a keystone piece, which would allow this frame to be built not only as a dead cat frame, but also as a true X frame. And finally, we have it. It's this one right here. So this kit now comes with two keystone pieces. And here they are. Now this one here, this is for dead cat style frames. That one goes in the bin. But this one here, this one is for true X style frames. And that's what I'm going to be using in this build. Okay, now I've been saying true X design, but that's not exactly the case. If we look down directly from the top, we can see there's actually an offset X design. Okay, so it's still an X type design, and I'm quite happy with that. That's good. Now, I know a lot of you are going to go down there into the comments and ask about 3.6 inch props. In the X configuration, on 3.6 inch props. So I'm going to put some motors on, and we're going to test out some 3.6 inch props and see what clearances we've got. Right, so let's take a look what sort of clearances we've got with 3.6 inch props. Now I think the camera cage clearance is fine. I'm good with that. Okay, so with the battery on, we've got plenty of clearance on the battery there. Let's have a look at the tip to tip clearance. Now I think we can see it here. So we've got about one millimeter tip clearance, which is really on the borderline. Or you know what, I can't really recommend 3.6 inch props with that tip clearance, but you know what, I'll probably try it anyway. And before we move on to the frame fit out, I have to tell you about the problem with this frame. This frame has got a problem, and we're going to use this to fix it. Okay, it's this lug here. So basically, it works like this. This is a TPU battery strap, and it goes over those lugs and holds the battery on. And in my previous video, I tried to convince myself that this was some sort of new and innovative way to hold a battery on. But you know what? It isn't. So that's going in the bin. And instead, we're just going to use a standard battery strap. Now, in that previous video, I was using a 16.5 millimeter battery strap, but this is something even better. This is a 14 millimeter wide battery strap, and it's just perfect for this. Okay, so that fits in there just great. But if we put a battery on, you're going to see the problem here. Okay, so the problem is these lugs here. So these lugs are actually holding the battery strap out away from the frame and they'll just allow the battery to move. Okay, so those lugs need to come off. Okay, and that's the way the piece should have been cut in the first place. Okay, so with those lugs taken off now, we put the battery in. You can see the battery strap will come nice and uh, flush 
with the side of the battery and hold it in place a lot more securely. Okay, so with our frame adjustments all done, let's think about our electronics package and how it's all going to fit out. First of all, for the motors, I'm going to be using these GFRC 1804 size motors. So these are the Speedex motors. And these ones are 3450kV. So at 3450kV, they're just perfect for a 850mAh4S battery. Now, I might even go back to using 1604 motors, but I'm just going to try these ones to start with. For the VTX, I'm just going to be using this Vista system here. It's a 20 by 20 mount. In this frame, the flight control is mounted to the top plate and the VTX is mounted to the bottom plate. So there's plenty of room in there. VTX mounting pattern is 20 by 20 as well as 25.5. So whether you're running a DJI 04, that'll fit in there just fine. If you've got a walk snail system with a single board, then you've got plenty of clearance between that uh, VTX and the standoff. You can run analog. You can run HD0, whatever you like. So the flight control I'm going to be using is this one. This is the JHE MCU GHF411. So this is just an all-in-one flight controller, and it's got a 35 amp ESC. And this is actually exactly the same flight controller that I was using on the on my Geno 35. So at 35 amps, it's more than enough for three and a half inch freestyle. So I'm just going to take the same flight controller and use it in the little flipper as well. Then I'll be using this ELRS receiver. I'm just using one with the ceramic antenna. And I just find for a free slot at the local park, that's more than adequate. If I can, I'll try to fit a beeper in there too. We'll see how much room we've got in the frame. Now, the real challenge with this frame is the flight controller mounting pattern. Now, one issue I have with this frame is this mounting pattern here. There's not really anything you can avoid because, of, because we're trying to straddle the arms and keep out of the way of the other mounts on the frame there. But most frames that are designed for an AIO flight controller would have the flight controller mounted like this and the battery release has come out the back. But with this one, it's a square on mount and you have to mount your flight controller like this, for example. And actually, I would suggest that you mount the flight controller like this with the battery leads coming out the front here. And then in that case, the battery leads can just come out here behind the camera cage and you're all good to go there. But in my case, I'm actually going to be mounting it a different way. So I'm going to be mounting it like this with the battery leads coming out the back here. And the reason for that is that I'm going to be running this one cam thumb mount here. And so you can see it takes up a bit of space at the front there. So if I try to put a battery on this, this wiring harness here is going to get in the way. So in my case, I'm going to have the battery mounted here with the wiring harness coming out the back there. And so I'm just going to run the battery wires through this little gap between the TPU and the top plate there and the battery wires will come out the back. So the capacitor is just going to sit neatly in there. I'm just going to keep the wires really short, and it's just going to stick out the side there and just clear the frame. And while I've got the flight controller set on the frame there, I'd just like to make a note of where the wires are going to run. For example, in my case, I'm running the power wires back here. VTX is coming straight out the back. On the front here, I've got my buzzer, so that's going to come back underneath the board. And for my receiver, I'm going to run those wires back across the board and come to the back here. So I like to do all the wiring with the flight controller off the frame. It's a little bit easier, uh, but also I like to do conformal coating. So I didn't always do conformal coating. I went through a stage where I stopped doing it and then I had some reliability issues. So now I'm back to doing conformal coating on all of my flight controllers again. Now one thing I like to do is to have one nut below and above the dampener secured with Loctite. For the receiver mounting I'm just using this FR45 board mount and just gluing the receiver on with some E6000 glue and a little bit of arm tape to secure it in place. So this is the technique I use. I just sold all the wires to the flight controller and leave plenty of length and then I just cut them to length and solder them to the peripherals, the receiver or VTX, whichever. And on this build, I'm just mounting the buzzer down the back here and securing it with double-sided foam tape and a little bit of arm tape as well.
Now with this frame, there's no easy way to route these motor wires. Somehow they've got to come from the top of the frame to the bottom of the frame and then onto the flight controller. And I just wish that 533 had put a little bit more thought into this flight controller and, and found a way to mount a diamond mount instead of mounting it square on like this. Anyway, so this is how I've run my motor wires and uh, connected them to the flight controller. Right, so there we go. Bottom part and top part of the frame ready to go to get them. And it's, it's kind of interesting how all the video components can be housed on the bottom part of the frame. Uh, you can see here I'm using some bolt protectors. And you can see how deep those caps are there. So they'll just offer a little bit of um, protection to the bolts, the bolt heads, and stop them from getting worn down. Okay, so one more thing I'm going to add to this frame, just to personalize a little bit, is this battery pad. And if you want to pick up one of those battery pads, you can get it at your favorite FPV store. Okay, moving on to the last part, the battery connector. So I always leave the XT60 or XT30 battery connector to last because I want to see how long the battery leads are and how far I need to cut these wires down to get the plug in exactly the right place. I think for the batteries I'm using, right about here is the best place for the connector to end up. Okay, and it's done. Quite an interesting build, actually. If I had to pick out any pain points, I'd just say the motors here, uh, having to run the motor wires from the top of the arms to the bottom of the arms to connect to the flight controller is definitely really annoying. And I just wish that 533 for a little bit more put into the orientation of the flight controller. Having it mounted square on like that really does cause some problems. I mean, it's not difficult, but in beta flight, you do have to change the orientation of the board which takes a bit of time, and also you have to reorder your motors and change the directions and things like that. Right, yeah, so we're not going to do a test flight in this video. I'm going to make this thing my daily flyer from now on, so I want to put some serious flight hours on this. There's a lot of things I want to test. I'm going to test these 1804 size motors, as well as 1604 size motors, 3.5 inch props, 3.6 inch props, and also do a bit of tuning on it. So in the future, I'll put up a flight video, and I'll give you my thoughts on how this thing performs. Well then, happy flying.